Hey everybody, I just recently watched this video called the Contrepreneur Formula Exposed. Like, entrepreneur with con at the beginning, like, you know, it's a scam. And it's an interesting video because 90% of the facts in the video I agree with. It's a well done video, it's well edited, it's well thought out, but it's based on a bad assumption. And so because it's based on a bad assumption, it comes to a bad conclusion. So I'm gonna give you my critique of this video. So you can love me or hate me for it. Feel free to let me know in the comments either way, but this is just my opinion. Okay, so if you're curious and you want to watch the original video, I'll put a link in the description below. Uh, I think the video was taken down once before for copyright infringement or something, but it's back up now, so I don't know if it's going to go back down. Maybe I have to find a new link, but as of now, as of recording this video, this is the link. Now, this video, The Contrepreneur Formula Exposed, is pretty obviously taking a swipe at Grant Cardone, right? It says like the 11X logo, right? The Grant Cardone's 10X logo, he made it 11X to avoid copyright infringement. <laughs> Maybe that's what he changed in the new video. And then, of course, he's talking about live events, which Grant Cardone does, and he, in his little imitation of the, of the sales guru, he's talking with a southern U.S. accent like Grant Cardone does. So obviously he's talking about Grant Cardone. And I don't know a whole lot about Grant Cardone. I've never been to one of his live events. I've never taken one of his courses. I've watched one or two YouTube videos from him, and that's it. So I really don't have any dog in this fight. I'm not interested in defending Grant Cardone or accusing him. I'm just giving my honest opinion of the video. Now, I've talked before about how middle class people love to doubt. They love to be cynical because if they doubt things, if they think that everything's a scam, that everything doesn't work, well, one, they can't fail, and two, they can feel superior because they're so smart and they're not stupid like those people that fell for the scam. So the middle class has this attitude because it makes them feel superior to other people. And I think it's horrible for if you want to be successful because it automatically cuts you off from any chance of success because you just dismiss everything as a scam. So every legit opportunity you put in the scam category, so there, there's just no hope for you. And that's what this video reeks of. And the base assumption of the video, which the guy never says explicitly, but is obviously the reasoning behind everything else that he says, is that Grant Cardone's or the entrepreneurs, you know, whoever that may be, course is not worthwhile. That the product that he sells at the end of the live event is not worth the money. It's just tricking people out of their money for nothing of value. Because if he was selling something that was worth the money, then it wouldn't matter that he's using these very persuasive methods. It wouldn't be a problem because he's doing something good for people. But the assumption is that the product is bad. The product is worthless. Now, the guy that made the video admits in the video that he didn't buy the product. In fact, he proudly proclaims that he bought a cheap chicken sandwich instead of buying the product. So he's basically proclaiming this product to be a terrible product, to be a waste of people's money, when he's never taken any look at the actual product. Makes you wonder how he claims to know that. But it gets worse because then he spends the rest of the video explaining how Grant Cardone, or whoever the, the guru is, uses all these psychological tricks to convince people to buy the product. He even goes so far as to talk to a psychology expert who confirms that yes, all of the tricks that Grant Cardone uses, like having people wake up early and, and do long days, and then uh, you know pushing emotional buttons, getting to people's hopes and dreams, uh, having a price that ends in a seven, all of these things are carefully researched psychological tactics that make people want to buy. And of course, their conclusion is that Grant Cardone is this evil sales genius who is using these manipulative scientific tricks to trick people into giving him money. Now, like I said, I don't know a lot about Grant Cardone, but what little I do know is that he teaches sales. So chances are, because he's a sales guy, because he teaches about selling, uh, I'm guessing that his course is about how to sell. So here's this guy that's this brilliant sales genius who knows all the tricks to convince people to buy, and he's selling a course telling you what he knows about sales. And this is a worthless investment? Somebody who has presumably made millions of dollars because of his superior knowledge of sales is selling a course teaching people to sell. Do you think that there is at least some chance that buying a sales course from a guy who is an expert at selling might actually be worth the money? That it might be a worthy investment? I mean, I don't know either. I don't have to take the course. I don't even know what the course is. but. Didn't he think for just a second to think that maybe this is actually a valuable product? 
<laughs> By the way, learning to sell is one of the most valuable skills you can have. And learning to sell doesn't just mean selling products that teach other people how to make money, right? Learning to sell works for everything. You can sell cars, you can sell boats, you can sell houses, you can sell cell phones, you can sell food. I mean, learning to sell is a skill that will help you in any industry, in anything that you could possibly do in any time period in human history. It's an extremely valuable skill. And if this course teaches you how to sell and it does it well, then it must be of value. Now, the video says that most people don't make money from Grant Cardone's course. And I don't know where he's getting that information from. I think probably he's making it up, but I also think that it's probably true. And I'm gonna share something with you that was kind of shocking to me. Uh, as you may know, I sell a course on how to become a digital nomad, which is somebody who works from a computer and travels the world. So here's the shocking part. Of the people who've paid me good money to buy this course, most of them have not even finished half of it. And it's kind of a long course, but it's not that long because this is what most people do. They get all excited about an idea and they say, I'm gonna change my life. I'm gonna finally do something different. I'm gonna be rise above mediocrity. They buy a course that will teach them how to do that. And then they, they watch the first few videos, they get all excited and then they go to bed and then the next day they wake up and everything is back to normal. The, the programming, the social programming, the feelings of unworthiness all come flooding back in and they say, well, there's no point in me trying anyway. I'm just stuck with mediocrity for my whole life. It's this horrible social programming that people have to get over and it's very difficult and most people are not up to the challenge. They do not want to put in the work that it takes to get to that point. And I don't think that that reflects on the quality of the course at all. I mean, it would be nice if the course includes some stuff on mindset and how to get your mindset right and how to destroy all those limiting beliefs and all that stuff that I talk about on my YouTube channel all the time. And I even actually include a little bit of that in my course. But even, even with me including that, you know, people have to actually do it. So I don't think it's fair to hold it against Grant Cardone's course for when most people don't even watch the videos, much less actually implement the implementation and go through the work and go through the risk and go through the uncertainty that it takes to actually be successful. That's not the course's fault. The course might be awesome. It might be the best course in the world and still most people won't get results. Why? Because most people don't do the work. Now again, I don't know anything about Grant Cardone's course. Maybe it's horrible, maybe it's great, I don't know. But regardless, if most people don't get results from it, that's to be expected and it's not Grant Cardone or the course's fault. Now, the course he talks about costs 397 pounds, which I think is about $600. And he seems to imply that that's too expensive, but never says why he thinks that's too expensive. Maybe it's because 397 pounds is a lot more than a $10 book. But this is just another example of good marketing, the same sort of good marketing that probably you learn if you take the course. It's all about framing. If this course can help you make $10,000 or $20,000 or a million dollars, uh, then would it be worth 397 pounds? Yeah, probably. I studied economics in college. In economics, we have this concept called producer and consumer surplus, where if in any transaction, uh, both parties are getting some benefit from it. So if you buy a coffee, it's because you value the coffee more than you value the money. And if the, if the producers, let's say Starbucks, sells you the coffee, it's because they want the money more than they want the coffee. So both people win. And how much each person in that, that transaction wins is called the consumer surplus and the producer surplus. So if you spend $5 for a coffee, for example, and that coffee was worth $7 to you, you would have spent $7 for that, that coffee, then the, the difference is called the consumer surplus. So there's a consumer surplus of $2. And from the Starbucks side, probably that coffee costs them like 50 cents to make. So they're charging $5, so they're getting $4.50 difference, which is called the producer surplus. So it's still a good transaction, and it would be good transaction anywhere from 51 cents to uh, $6.99 right? Because both people would still be winning on the transaction, but there's a lot of wiggle room there in between those two points. And the fact that Starbucks is making such a big producer surplus when compared to the consumer surplus means that Starbucks is doing good marketing. Well, Grant Cardone's doing good marketing too, because if you're a marketer, you want to increase that 
producer surplus as much as you possibly can while still being within that range where it's still good for the consumer. It's still worth his money. If you think about it in terms of your business, a good marketer uses the value to the consumer as the frame. So if, if Starbucks knows that you are willing to pay $7 for the coffee, they say, hey, how much would you love this coffee? How much, how good would this coffee taste in your mouth? How much better, how much more energy would you feel if you had this coffee? They make you think of all the good things about the coffee and recognize its value to you. And then they mark it down a little bit from that value to you. And take most of that surplus for themselves. That's good marketing, as opposed to bad marketing, would be a company that says, okay, this coffee cost me 50 cents to make, so I'm gonna put a 20% markup and sell it for 60 cents, right? Because they're not starting with the consumer in mind. They're, they're just considering themselves. They're considering their own costs and they're marketing up from there. So, so anyway, maybe if you buy Grant Cardone's course, you learn that, but you just learned it for me for free. Okay, now the video says that Grant Cardone, or whoever the entrepreneur is, is forcing people to buy his course, but that's so obviously not true. Yes, he's using psychological tricks to make the course look more attractive. That's not forcing. This is victim mentality at its worst. You know, I, before I was saying that this uh, kind of everything's scam, everything doesn't work, that's kind of like a middle class mentality, but this is worse. This is poor people mentality that if I bought something, then it's somebody else's fault. If I chose to buy something because somebody made it seem very convincing, then that person is to blame if I made a bad decision. And it's kind of funny how he says that people are forced to buy this thing when he didn't buy it. He attended the same presentation. Why was everybody else forced, but he wasn't forced? Probably because he thinks he's smarter than everybody else. But it does bring up an interesting ethical question that I think a lot of us have been brainwashed on, and that is, is being convincing a bad thing? Right? Is using psychological tricks to make people more attracted to your product, is that a bad thing? Now, probably there's a lot of different opinions on this, but in my opinion, the answer to this question rests entirely on the quality of the product. If you're convincing people to buy something that is going to make their lives better, then it's perfectly ethical. But if you're convincing people to buy things that is not going to make people's lives better and it's just going to waste their money, then obviously no, it's not ethical at all. And as I explained in this video, I don't think that that's happening very much and it's going to be happening less and less in the future because the modern marketplace is making it more and more difficult to scam people for a variety of reasons. So the real ethical question here is, is a sales course created by an extremely successful salesman a bad product? And I can't say for sure because I haven't taken the course, but probably the answer is no. So not not only is it ethical to use all the tricks in your toolbox to sell a good product that will make people's lives better, but I believe that you have a responsibility. If you have something that can make people's lives better, you should do everything that you possibly can. All the tools in your toolbox you should use to try to get that person to buy that product. And the fact that poor and middle class people see this kind of thing as unethical is just a testament to the strength of the anti-rich people, anti-money, anti-business, anti-sales, anti-entrepreneurship brainwashing that we have all been subject to since birth. And if you ever want to have any success in your life, you've got to get rid of that brainwashing. You have to turn off the TV, turn off Hollywood, turn off all the negative influences, all the news. You know, I saw an article the other day that was entitled, Why Are Rich People So Mean? Right, as if that's just a given that rich people are mean. Rich people aren't mean, at least not in my experience. But anyway, we're getting all this propaganda from all angles saying that rich people are bad and people that sell are bad, etc., etc. And we're all brainwashed with this. So if you ever want to have any success of being rich yourself, well, you got to get over that because you're never gonna do something that you think is bad. Now, to be fair, he does mention in this video some of the tactics that Grant Cardone or the entrepreneur is using to get people to buy that I do think are unethical because they're dishonest. And he doesn't provide any proof that these things are actually happening. He doesn't have any pictures. He doesn't have any testimonials. So take this with a grain of salt, but giving him the benefit of the doubt, assuming that he's telling the truth, I agree that these practices are unethical. One of those is fake testimonials, that he has people up on stage giving fake testimonials, saying that they made so much money with this product when they didn't. They're just paid actors. Now, I have no idea how he knows this. Uh, I suspect, again, that he's making this up, so don't, don't put too much value into that one. The next is fake scarcity, and I'm more likely to believe him on this one because I've seen people do this a lot. That is, that they say that, oh, there's only 20 of these products left. Right, when it's a digital product that they could copy a thousand times. Or that, you know, this product is only gonna be available for another three hours. 
when probably the product's gonna be available for the next year at least. And he also said that the event used plants. So people who are actors who act all excited about the product and the moment the product's announced, they rush to the back of the room. And so it's, it's a concept called social proof where people see other people are doing something and then they wanna do it more. And he says that he went to multiple of these live events and saw the same people rushing to the back of the room. So uh, that's pretty good evidence that there are plants, assuming that he's telling the truth, of course. And if that's all the case, then I totally agree. I think that's totally unethical. I think it's lying. I think it's dishonest. I don't think, even to sell a good product, I don't think that that is justified. Is it worth lying to people? Is it worth being dishonest to convince them to change their lives? Well, I don't think so but you know, I can understand why some people might disagree with me. And really the very existence of this video shows why it's a bad thing because if this is really what he's doing, well, if he's having to use dishonest tactics to sell his product and people like this video creator find out about it, well, he's just kind of shot his reputation. I mean, Grant Cardone makes a lot more money than I do, so take my opinion with a grain of salt, but in my opinion, it's bad for the long term because he's, he's giving these people, these, these hardened cynics, like the guy that made this video, uh, more ammunition saying, oh, this guy's a fake. See, he's using plants in his audience. And whereas somebody like me who sees through the cynicism and would like to argue with his points, well, I can't argue with that point. If he's lying to his audience, then he's lying to his audience. You know, I can't possibly justify that. Anyway, so the takeaway that I hope that you got from this is that knee-jerk cynicism is not serving you, it's not serving anyone else. It's based on bad assumptions. And if you want to make other people's lives better, and to make your own life better for that matter, you have to get over this negative programming and these limiting beliefs that this video exemplifies. Anyway, I don't have anything against this guy that did this video. I mean, I thought it was well done. I thought it was well researched. It was well edited. It was well presented. Right, it was a pretty good video. I just think that this guy is a, the result of his programming just like everybody else. And he's unfortunately been brainwashed with this limiting beliefs that most of us have been and he hasn't been able to escape from those yet. So I think it's good to listen to all sides, but don't let this kind of thinking influence you because it will only hold you back. And if you want to know more about what I think about this topic, check out this video that I did all about how I think that providing legitimate value is going to be the way of the future. I think scammers are going to be less and less successful and therefore there's going to be less and less of them because scamming just isn't going to work in a modern economy. So check out that video and if you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe, hit the bell icon beside the subscribe and share this video with anybody who you think would find it useful. Thank you guys.